and gentlemen, my next guest is a comedian, a dear friend, and the host of the popular podcast Inside Out with Paul Mercurio. Past guests of Paul's included Kevin Costner, Paul McCartney, and Stephen Colbert. Please welcome Paul Mercurio. <laughs> So, um, people ask me all the time when I was a stand-up, is it hard to do stand-up these days because everything is so politically correct? And I think it's hard to live life because things are so politically correct. Now, I believe in political correctness, but I think the pendulum has kind of swung this way at times, and it's got to come back in the middle. And everybody needs to relax a little bit, okay? For starters, can we stop reading into what we say to each other? My wife and I are walking our dog in Central Park. Now, it's a law in New York, you're supposed to have your dog on a leash, and we did. There's this guy's dog wasn't on the leash, big dog, scaring people. So my wife nicely said to him, excuse me, uh, so your dog, it really should be on a leash. And he goes like this, why, because it's a pit bull? <laughs> right, right, implying that we were racist toward pit bulls? <laughs> I'm like, no, because it's got a baby in its mouth, that's why. because it has prison tattoos and it's smoking Chesterfields, okay? <laughs> That's right, I said Chesterfields. <laughs> there was a time when you could do innocent things that you can't do anymore. Every Halloween, my parents would dress me as a hobo. <laughs> right? Remember? Some of you are nodding your head, right? Remember? They didn't mean anything by it. You couldn't do that now. It's a homeless person. It would be considered offensive. I get it, and it was weird. <laughs> Think about it. Our parents dressed us as homeless people <laughs> and sent us out onto the streets at night <laughs> to collect free food. <laughs> and I never got candy. Every house, baked beans and a harmonica. That was it. <laughs> Listen, can we embrace stereotypes? They're fine, OK? They make us different, and that's what makes life interesting, okay? It doesn't make you a bad person to stereotype. It doesn't, okay? Everybody needs to relax. I'm Italian, 100% Italian. When you heard that, you had a stereotypical thought. You either thought mafia <laughs> or plastic on the furniture. You did, you did. <laughs> and guess what? For me, they both apply, and that's okay. <laughs> The plastic on the furniture thing, it's, you know, lower class people don't have a lot of money. There's that one room with furniture that's really nice, so you can only go in twice a year, right? <laughs> Ma'am, you're nodding your head, right? And you, it's gotta be right. And you go in tw twice, you go Christmas and Easter, that's it. <laughs> and in that same room, there's a picture of the Pope, Jesus, and Frank Sinatra. <laughs> right? And the Frank Sinatra picture is three times the size of the Pope and the Jesus picture. <laughs> And the mafia part's true. My cousin Bobby, he's a small-time mob guy. He runs numbers, yeah. And he dresses like John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> he does. Big quaff of hair, tight pants, on the street corner, smoking cigarettes. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? One of these guys? Like, he's got a live snake in his pants, right? And he sells stuff out of the trunk of his car. Last week, he was selling suits, ratchets, and car alarms. <laughs> it gets better. Car alarms he stole out of other people's cars. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Bobby, a Guido, we call him a Guido. Why don't I, this is how we came dressed to my father's funeral. An open casket funeral. I am not making this up. Fluorescent orange silk shirt, unbuttoned gold chains. <laughs> white pant leather belt, white slacks. You get in the picture? A creamsicle with chest hair. <laughs> white mesh loafers, no socks, because it's the summer. <laughs> But you gotta put powder on your feet to keep them dry. But Bobby, being the goodie, was too much powder on him. So every time he'd step toward the casket, <laughs> puffs of white smoke would come out of the tops of his shoes. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>a few minutes here, I want to I ask you something about the intro here. Yes. Is that I know I've done your podcast. I yes. know people like your podcast. 
But did you, is that true? You had Paul McCartney on your podcast? What do you mean, is it true? Yes. I, <laughs> I have had Paul McCartney on once. Right. Well, I had him on because of you. Why do you have, because of me? Because he was at the Colbert Report as a guest and I got him there. You buttonholed him backstage? <laughs> I, I did. I'm like that little shark that swims on top of the big shark, you. <laughs> Well, what was it? What was it like? What was it like getting so, McCartney? So he had just finished rehearsal, and and I round that 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 big door you go through, and then sure. the, the stage. I open that huge door, yeah. And standing in the hallway, all alone, is Paul McCartney, leaning against the wall like this, chewing gum, looking up at the ceiling, adorable, like with a little Colbert Report T-shirt and a, chewing gum, like he's waiting for a bus, all alone. So he had nobody with it's him. Just and, you and McCartney in this hallway. Right. So I see him, and then my whole world slows down. I'm like, oh my god, it's Paul McCartney. <laughs> And I'm like, should I say hi? Should I not say hi? And I'm like, he's alone, unguarded, in a hallway. He's like a gazelle on the Serengeti Plains. I'm alive. I'm going to pounce. OK. So I go over, and I just say, it's an honor to meet you. So excited to see your show. And I walk away. And he goes, wait, come back. And I, he goes, what's your name? I go, Paul. He goes, oh, Paul, that's a good name. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll do the jokes, buddy, all right? You just, uh... No, he goes, what do you do? I go, I'm a stand-up, I act, right, blah, blah, blah. He goes, uh, oh, yeah, I love stand-up. He goes, you got a kid? Yeah, I got a kid. It's hard. It's turn. Five minutes, ten minutes go by. I'm talking to Paul McCartney wow. like I'm talking to you. And as I'm talking to him, I'm super smooth on the outside. I'm like, hey, talking to Paul. On the inside, I'm like, I'm talking to Paul McCartney! <laughs> and then I realize, OK, this thought comes to mind. Paul McCartney should do my podcast. <laughs> so I say, I know this is crazy, but I'd love to talk about how you make music. Would you do my podcast? And he goes, yeah, sure. Just like that. Now. That easy. Now, so then he goes to me, how would we do it? Deer in the headlights. I'm just going to stand up for this. This is what I said. He goes, how would we do it? And these noises actually came out of my body. I'm like, ah, ah. And I'm like rock, And I'm rubbing my leg like Rain Man and rocking back. And forth. Ah, ah. I'll come to London. And he's like, we're in a room in New York together. Why would you come to London? And then he said to me, is it easy to do? And I actually said to the most influential musician in the last century, oh, yeah, I don't want to be a bother. It's real easy. You can do it on your phone, naked from your toilet. I'm like, oh, my god. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, let me get out of here while the getting's good. I said, yeah. I'll set this up with your assistant. He goes, here's the mind blow right here. He goes, no, no, you and I will do it. Wow. You and I will exchange phone numbers. And when I call you, you have to be ready to do it. Yeah. So now I'm handing my phone number to Paul McCartney. He does the show. I'm running late. Actually, you get to The Daily Show. I'm running late. My phone rings. I don't recognize the number. I let it ring the voicemail. <laughs> and I immediately called him back. And wow. it, he couldn't have been nicer. Can you get him on this show? <laughs> Paul, it was lovely to see you. Lovely to see you, man. Nice Thank to you see you always. Thank you. You can catch Paul at the House of Comedy in Vancouver, Canada this weekend and on his podcast, Inside Out with Paul Mercurio. We'll be right back.